Hello. Today we are in the uh, Learn to Code chapter Conditional Code and we're working on the fourth activity called Conditional Climb. This is one of my favorite activities so far. It's a, it's a pretty neat activity. Uh, plus there's lots of interesting things we're going to be learning here. So it's an important activity as well. Um, we've up to this point been using this idea of condition statements. In Swift they're called if statements. And inside those if statements there are conditions like is on gem or is on a closed switch. And uh, these represent what we call Boolean values. And a Boolean value can either be true or it can be false at any given time. It can only be those two values. Okay, uh, and this idea of, of something having one of two possible values is an idea that we'll use quite often in our programming. Um, you can think of all the different ideas that we can represent with just two values. You can represent the idea of on or off, open and closed, left or right, happy or sad, moving, still, um, full color, black and white, up or down, playing sound, muted, full or empty, finished, unfinished, light, dark, whether your YouTube video is paused or unpaused, whether you're ready to start or whether you're in progress, um, whether Byte has more than six gems or Byte has six gems or fewer. Uh, even if you do Facebook, you can um, think of the idea of whether you're in a relationship or not in a relationship. So you get the idea. There's lots of times in our life when we're trying to model something that either it can have one of two different states, true, false, open, closed, on, off, so on. Those cases are perfect times to be using Boolean values. So conditional statements, like if statements in Swift, these if statements that we've been using, will do different commands depending on whether the Boolean value, the condition, is true or false. And if the condition's true, they'll do one set of commands. Else, or otherwise, if it's not true, they'll do another set of commands. Those sets of commands can either be a single command or it can be a block of two or more commands contained in a set of curly braces. Okay, so we're going to do that here in this puzzle, but first we need to look at this puzzle because it's an interesting puzzle. Um, let's take a look at it here and see if you notice anything about where these gems are located, at least where most of the gems are located. You see anything interesting about where these gems are located? Specifically this gem, this gem, and this gem. Yeah, they're right before a set of stairs, correct? And in fact, they're right before a set of stairs, and they're right before uh, a set of stairs and a turn to the left. So if Byte were to have to climb up all these stairs, at every time he finds a gem, He's going to have to turn to the left and go up the stairs till he gets to the next gem. And when he gets to the next gem, he's going to have to collect that gem, turn to the left, go up the stairs until he gets to the next gem. When he gets to the next gem, he's going to have to collect the gem, turn to the left, and go up the stairs to get the other gem. So the gems are both things he needs to collect, and they're acting as these important signals for when Byte needs to turn to the left. Okay. All right, with that in mind, um, let's just think about what Byte wants to do when he reaches a gem. Okay, so let's go ahead and make this condition here. Uh, if Byte reaches a gem, we're going to say if is Byte is on gem, then what thing or things do we want to do? Well, just like always, we for sure want to collect the gem. Okay. But we also said that these gems are signaling to us that that's the time when Byte needs to turn to the left as well. So let's do that as well. Turn to the left. So he'll be facing uh, toward the next gem. Okay. Now, if uh, is on gem is false, or if Byte's on a tile that does not contain a gem, then what we want to do is just keep moving forward. 
Okay, And that's most of the time in this puzzle. Most of the time, uh, you're not on a gem, and those times you just want to be moving forward. But on those rare times when you are on a gem, we want to grab the gem and then turn to the left so that we're ready the next time to keep moving forward. Okay? All right. Uh, let's just try running this here, and we'll see what happens. So here goes Byte. Is he on a gem here? No, move forward. No, move forward. Yes, he is on a gem. So he collects it and turns to the left. And he's not on a gem, not on a gem, not on a gem. He is on a gem. So he collects it, move to the left. He's not on a gem. He is on a gem. Collect it, turn to the left. And not on a gem, not on a gem. And is on a gem. So he collects it, turns to the left. And well, okay. Uh, good. We made it. Okay, so just to review, uh, at the beginning here we talked a lot about Boolean values. And Boolean values are used a lot when we're trying to model the world. All kinds of things from on off to left right is in a relationship and not in a relationship. And later on, after we have a bit more practice with, bo with Boolean values, we may uh, be able to do a, a problem like this set us back down to the bottom, without a for loop, okay? And maybe it might make sense to us then to change our thinking in this and say, instead of doing something like this a set number of times, we could look at how many gems we have, and we'll say, as long as we don't have all of the gems we need, we're going to keep doing this. Is If we're on a gem, turn left and collect gem, otherwise move forward as long as we don't have our total number of gems but as soon as we do have our total number of gems four we're gonna stop okay so later on we won't have a for loop in here we'll have some other kind of a loop that maybe will check some boolean condition to say see if we've got our total number of gems yet or not alright uh, but we're gonna practice a little bit first with uh, more with some boolean values um, and then, um, then we'll then we'll uh, introduce that in, in about three or four more activities. Okay, all right, that's it for today. Good job. See you next time.